Greetings, my name is Casey Luskin and I'm here on behalf of Discovery Institute. Intelligent design theory is not the same as creationism. Intelligent design, which is different from creationism. Intelligent design is different from creationism? Are you sure about that, Luskin? Are you sure you don't want to just label all scientists just Darwinists and claim that it's all part of a conspiracy against you? Why then do some Darwinists keep trying to conflate intelligent design with creationism? In other words, the charge that intelligent design is creationism is a rhetorical strategy on the part of Darwinists who wish to delegitimize design theory without actually addressing the merits of its case. Just a rhetorical strategy? Oh, really, Luskin? Well, let's see what Dean Kenyon of the Discovery Institute, that's the same intelligent design agency you work for, described intelligent design and creationism in various drafts of his book of Pandas and People. In an early draft, he states that creation means that various forms of life began abruptly through the agency of an intelligent creator with their distinctive features already intact. Fish with fins and scales, birds with feathers, beaks and wings, etc. In a later edition of the book, he states that intelligent design means that various forms of life began abruptly through an intelligent agency with their distinctive features already intact. Fish with fins and scales, birds with feathers, beaks and wings, etc. Yeah, sure, Luskin, it's all just a rhetorical strategy by a conspiracy. This all came out in the Dover court case back in 2005, when a judge ruled on the crushing weight of the evidence that... In making this determination, we have addressed the seminal question of whether intelligent design is science. We have concluded that it is not, and moreover that intelligent design cannot uncouple itself from its creationist and thus religious antecedents. But wait, maybe I'm being unfair. Let's take a look at the interview with Luskin on Fox and Friends. Just watch as he nods in eager agreement as the host describes the conflict between creationism versus Darwinism as being white-hot, all under the banner title of evolution versus creationism. To evolution in textbooks, the fight over how to teach the subject, evolution, should have been over. But some textbooks are still getting it wrong, raising the question, should the board be stripped of its power to choose textbooks? Join us right now from the Discovery Institute, an organization that has been heavily involved in the Texas case, is Casey Luskin. Uh, good morning to you, Casey. Thanks for having me. Okay. Now, I, your problem, and the whole thing, creationism versus Darwinism, is, is uh, you know, white hot these days. You are, you, your main problem with science books is that they take a one-sided look at evolution, right? That's exactly right. Unfortunately, the vast majority... Ironically, back in 2007, Luskin published a paper in the Montana Law Review titled Intelligent Design Will Survive Kitzmiller vs. Dover. That's the court ruling I referred to earlier. The immediate irony being that neither Luskin's nor the Discovery Institute seem to have the conviction of their own words. Contrary to claims that you may have heard, we do not support the teaching of creationism, nor do we favor putting intelligent design, which is different from creationism, into the Texas science standards. And in fact, our position at Discovery Institute is that intelligent design should not be required or mandated. Although Discovery Institute does not advocate requiring the teaching of intelligent design in public schools, it does believe there is nothing unconstitutional about discussing the scientific theory of design in the classroom. Incidentally, Luskin, it really doesn't matter what the Discovery Institute believes is constitutional or not. It has already been ruled that intelligent design is just a rebranding of creationism. Your beliefs on the matter are simply an irrelevance here. Luskin's papers are, of course, an utter bore to read unless you fancy the sport of exposing creationists in Discovery Institute clothing. The disguise in this case is comically superficial, and one is spoilt for choice. But one of the more obvious gems being the first line of the conclusions. The opinion of Kitzmiller is a misguided attempt on the part of a federal judge to settle a controversy over science and religion that properly belongs to practicing scientists and religious groups. Yeah, tell me again, Luskin, how intelligent design is a scientific theory and not just a rebranding of creationism. But it gets better. Luskin makes many Freudian slips like this. Creationism is much different. It is focused on defending a literal reading of the Genesis account, usually including the creation of the earth by the biblical God a few thousand years ago. 
Wow, Laskin. Creationism can only be defined as a literal interpretation of the biblical book of Genesis. But it gets even better than that. On Luskin's Discovery Institute page, he states that he is co-founder of the Intelligent Design and Evolution Awareness Center, a non-profit helping students to investigate evolution by starting idea clubs on college and high school campuses across the country. And when you look at their webpage, it states that Idea Center Leadership, and yet that includes Luskin, believes that the identity of the designer is the God of the Bible. <laughs> Let me read that again. The Intelligent Design and Evolution Awareness Center's leadership, which includes Luskin, states that they believe that the designer is the God of the Bible. And yet Luskin will sit in front of a camera with a straight face and say... Unlike creationism, the scientific theory of intelligent design is agnostic regarding the source of design and has no commitment to defending Genesis, the Bible, or any other sacred text. Casey Luskin and the Discover Institute, welcome to your new home at Why Do People Laugh at Creationists? But let's take a look at your publication, shall we? First, the Journal of Church and State. Yeah. That's an interesting journal to put forward a case for intelligent designer science. Hmm, citation zero. That means that no one who read it deemed it important enough to mention. Hardly a hot article, is it, Luskin? But let's take a deeper look. Hmm, first and second search terms. Creationism and intelligent design. Rather peculiar search terms for someone who thinks that they are entirely different. The abstract reads... Review several laws to assess the ability to present creation science, intelligent design theory, or scientific criticism of evolution in public school districts in the U.S., which have various teaching viewpoints. Restrictions faced by the teaching of creation science. Background on the lemon test, a judicial vehicle used by U.S. courts to determine the constitutionality of teaching creation science. <laughs> creation science nature of intelligent design theory oh single author paper casey no one else to blame on this one the second paper is actually a legitimate peer-reviewed science paper using methods such as argon argon dating of rocks about six million years old uh, congratulations casey you've not been a complete waste of skin but really casey maybe you should spend some of your effort trying to explain to young earth creationists about radiometric dating you know, this sort of thing. The dating methods that evolutionists rely upon to assign millions and billions of years to rocks are very inconsistent and based on unproven and questionable assumptions. Rather than sowing disinformation about evolution. Then lastly, we come to the funniest of all of them. Progress in complexity, information, and design. Come on, tell us about it, Luskin. There is also now a peer-reviewed journal that focuses on design theory progress in complexity, information, and design, which has an editorial advisory board of more than 50 scholars from relevant scientific disciplines, most of whom have university affiliations. Now, not you thinking, that sounds suspiciously like a journal founded specifically by intelligent design creationists, simply so they could publish their pseudoscience. Well, yeah, sure, the web page does look very amateurish, but let's not hold that against anyone. Editorial board headed by Intelligent Design Proponentist and Discover Institute fellow William Dembski. Hmm, I wonder how many of the eight editions of the journal Dembski is published in. Uh, seven. But it gets better than that. The last edition of the journal was in 2005. Yep, that's right. No sooner had it been ruled in 2005 that Intelligent Design was just a rebranding of creationism and therefore couldn't be taught in U.S. schools. The intelligent design movement abandoned its uh, peer-reviewed journal. Presumably it's a waste of time. Indeed, the last I heard, Dembski was teaching intelligent design at a Southern Evangelical Seminary. Ah, the Southern Evangelical Seminary. World-renowned for their peerless academic prowess and their state-of-the-art research facilities. However, ID proponentists of the Discovery Institute, such as Luskin's here, are still intent on spreading disinformation on evolution. And while they do, why do people laugh at creationists who will be only too happy to call them on it?